and this is your host Wally Sarkisian with Armenian the best intellectual Harut Sasunian she's a he's a journalist publisher writer all that stuff and he's uh, frequently coming here every time we need something we ca ask him so there are my uh, okay um, because I'm monitoring on another uh, monitor, so that's why that one comes up, too. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I'm going to ask you a couple of things here. And as you know, what we do here is conversational. This is not an interview, so people think, you know, why you ask this, you didn't ask this, or why you're talking. So this is a conversational, you know, so people have to understand that. So, uh, Harut, welcome. Thank you. Um, now, I look at Armenian situation, especially this war stuff, in two dimensions. One is we look about this Pashinyan, uh, if he's uh, is in incompetent and uh, he mismanaged this war, he didn't know what the hell he was doing. The other dimension, I look, there is this sort of conspiracy, but it's becoming more reality, which is I'm more uh, every day something new, it's popping up. Um, today or yesterday, Azerbaijani leader said, Aliyev, that if, Azerba if Armenia didn't, what he call it surrender, that we will be losing the war. I don't know if you've seen that or not. Um, on the other hand, when Pashinyan said, of course, this is the second time he, s he sent message to Erdogan that unconditional opening the border and having relationship with Turkey. And Turkey's message was today, Erdogan, someplace, uh, let me see here, I, I think I have it someplace here to give you exactly what he said. Um, so, um, he said, Erdogan said, um, when responding to Pashinyan, he said, Turkey will take steps if Armenian seized the opportunity. So what that mean, this is opportunity? What Armenia's opportunity is here? Well, uh, th this is not a new subject, as you know, and uh, it's particularly uh, upsetting to me, <coughs> especially since last three years, we hear day and night, the former leaders, former presidents, but he here's a, a very clear cut case where what Pashinyan is doing exactly word for word is what the previous leaders did, at least Ser Sarkisian did. They had the Armenia-Turkey protocols, they want to open the borders, they want to have a, a commission to study whether genocide took place or not. When we fought that tooth and nail, we demonstrated, protested, I've written 43 editorials against it over the years, and finally it fell apart. And, and Pashinyan, who's against uh, the previous leaders of all things, he decides to take and copy exactly what Ser Sarkisian had done after it, it, it collapsed, which is even worse, which means that he's not even able to learn a lesson from the failures of, of the previous ones and from the unspoken position of the Ar Armenian world in diaspora in Armenia. Just about everybody was against, uh, opposed to it, except the leadership. So Pashinyan now is, uh, takes up where Serge left left out left off, and uh, again he, he wants relations with Turkey without preconditions. And what what he fails to understand is that with Azeris and with Turks, the minute you give in a little bit, they're not satisfied. They ask for more. The minute you give one inch, they, they, they want uh, a yard, and they, then they want a half a mile, they want a mile, or 10 miles, 100 miles. There's no end to what they want. Yeah. So it, the wording that you just read 
is a good example of that. Uh, Erdogan is saying if uh, Armenia do- takes the proper steps, we will be accommodating. In, in, in simple language, what he's saying is Armenia has to make concessions even more than what we've lost in the war to Turkey. And if Armenia is foolish enough, and, and we are foolish most of the time, we will make concessions. And then Erdogan and Aliyev will say, ah, this guy is caving in. So they uh, ask for more. They ask for more concessions. They just, uh, if you allow people to sit on your back, they're, they're, they're going to sit on your back and choke you and ask for more. They're not going to say, oh, poor Armenians, they're suffering, they're this, they're that. No one feels sorry for us. They, the more you suffer, the more they will uh, be happy and they will make you suffer more. So this thing about Turkey and have relations with no preconditions, and Pashina has said this number of times, this is really uh, unbelievable for me. And the sooner he gets this crazy idea out of his head, the better off will all Armenians be and Armenia will be. Because it's, I see these puzzles, it's really coming together. The war, you know, when, as I mentioned the first one, when today or yesterday, Aliyev said, if Armenia didn't stop or surrender, we would lose the war because they were exhausted, their everything. And then Pashinyan, Russia tried, yeah. you see, we always, we've been blaming Russia for lots of things, but am I feeling the way I see this whole things is that this is Pashinyan and Erdogan have some secret deal here. Someday this is going to come up. Because this guy, you know this, Hakim Fedain, Fedan. He's yes, a uh, Erdogan intelligent. Intelligence, yes. Right. And compare this guy to this Armenian one, Armen Gregorian. I have a feeling, you know, I could be wrong, but I, I, I know Turkish false flag operations. I've been following it for 20 years before... This Pashinian came in, we start, I start talking about Armenia. Before it was all Turkey. And I know, I have a feeling, these two guys are talking to each other. Because this Armenian guy is a total idiot. I'm going to show you a video. I interviewed him. He was just election observer. He, has, he is a professional activist. He has no idea about military and all that stuff. And they're putting, and this guy in hand, you know, just putting like a sheep in a, in a hand of wolves. And I think there is something going on under this Pashinian Ordegon. They're talking to them publicly. Pashinian saying opening the border, uh, unconditional, uh, Ordegon replying, if you meet our steps, stuff like that. This is something under it is going. Because this guy, <coughs> this guy, even he resigned to, to run for parliament, Ordegon wouldn't let him. He, uh, for example, now there is negotiation uh, with Israel, with uh, Dubai. All is this guy is doing. He is the... Erdogan, Erdogan under, underneath guy. And so there is something going here fishy between Armenia and Turkey. And that's why even last time, I think when we talked, I showed you uh, a page that Erdogan that time was telling our, uh, uh, Pashinyan that don't listen to foreigner and specifically mentioned diaspora. It was in that Turkish news, uh, what is, uh, I forgot the name. Um, so, so there is something fishy going here, Harut. Your thought? Well, my, my thought is, this is nothing new. The, the, the big mistake that our, all Armenians make, and we've 
we've learned this from childhood and it's a big mistake we make. We, we think we're so intelligent, we're God's gift to humanity, we're so brilliant, and then we always look down on Turks, they're ignorant, they're barbarians, they're butchers. And, and we keep saying this all our lives, and never once we stop to look at reality, we fool ourselves. The reality is that the Turks are masters in diplomacy. Exactly. The Turks ran an empire for 600 years, Ottoman Empire, where, where we were like slaves, uh, second-class citizens and uh, who were stepped on, we ran nothing while the Turks were running an empire from uh, all the way from Central Europe to the far corners of the Middle East, all the way to North Africa. So they have 600 years of experience running a huge empire. We, we, we ran nothing. We had a republic for two years, we lost, and now we have the republic we have now, and we don't know what's gonna happen to, to that. So rather than making, laughing at Turks and making fun of them, and that's why I've stopped blaming Turkey, Azerbaijan, Russia, or whoever. I only blame ourselves because it's easy to ignore your own mistakes, your weakness, and blame somebody else. We have to be honest enough and say, no, we screwed up, we were wrong, we didn't know any better. We should also acknowledge that we have a strong, powerful enemy, intelligent enemy. They know what they're doing. I mean, look at look at what Erdogan has done. He is the head of a country whose economy is almost bankrupt. It's a collapsing economy. He's taken that collapsing economy and created a powerful military hardware, drones, missiles, now they're working on jets because the United States banned them from the F-35. They're making deals with Ukraine, with Poland, with Latvia, with uh, the Arab countries, uh, with Ethiopia, the, uh, selling them all sorts of advanced weaponry and, uh, and bringing in income. They, whereas we, we haven't done anything, all we said for 30 years, and this, and this is a criticism of both today's leaders and previous leaders. We said we're powerful, we have the most powerful army in the Caucasus. Nobody will dare to touch us. Uh, not only we made fun of the Turks, we also made similar fun of the Azeris. The Azeris are, in Armenian we say, Bakhkoden. they're cowards. They don't know how to fight. And, and as the former defense minister said right before the war, foolishly, Donoyan, he said, more war, more territories will, 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 will take. And a lot of Armenians kept saying for 30 years, if Azeris start a war, we'll march into Baku. And what happened? Just the opposite. We lost what we had and the Azeris marched into all the way close to Stepanagir. Yeah, they're knocking uh, on Armenia's border. And on Armenia's borders. And now they're in inside Armenia's border for, for, since May. Yeah. And, and uh, Aliyev, who never misses an opportunity to make fun of Armenians, uh, you know, in, he constantly is addressing Pashinyan by name, uh, keeps saying, hey, Pashinyan, now we'll do. Pashinyan, what happened? And, uh, and then w when he had a big military parade in Baku a couple of months ago, Aliyev gave a speech, again, making fun of Pashinyan. He said, Pashinyan kept saying that Armenian tanks will enter Baku. Well, here they are, the Armenian tanks that we captured, they are in Baku, but not the Armenians. Their tanks are here, but not the Armenians. So we have to start looking at ourselves, acknowledge our weakness, try to do something about it, try to get stronger, get armed, get united, get our act together, and stop blaming this guy, that guy, this country, that country, that will not get us anywhere. If you're a weak country, a small country, you're going to remain weak and remain small unless you organize and you do something about it. But we just talk. We're a nation of talkers. There's probably less than 1% that act. 
and do things. 99% of us just talk. We're great at talking. When it comes to talking, we're champions. Yeah. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. When there's a war, I'm going to be on the front line. I'm going to do, uh, kill so many Turks, so many other areas. But when the war starts, these people are nowhere. Uh, and it's, it's never the right time to do the right thing. Not now, I can't do it now, I'm busy, I have this, I have that. So it's, 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 it's a shame. And uh, we've, we've lived like this for 3,000 years, at least. And uh, we, never, we were never a nation that, that was brilliant in diplomacy. We were very always poor in diplomacy. And we are now. And we're going to be, in the, at least in the foreseeable future, unless we take drastic action to, to raise a new generation that has the right education, right frame of mind to, to be top-notch diplomats. Unfortunately, instead of going in the right direction, we're going backwards. Pashinyan keeps appointing all these people around him. Not a single one of them is qualified to, uh, to be a dog catcher, let alone to be a minister, advisor, foreign minister, economic minister, Nothing. ambassador in Washington. Oh, he, he keeps Total disaster. He's incompetent himself and he's appointing people who are even less competent than him. So what we have as a result is that we have a one-man rule. He's, he makes all the decisions. In fact, in the middle of the night, last night, I was watching the Armenian parliament session live and uh, Pashinyan spoke and uh, he said, I make all the decisions. He even acknowledged yeah. that. Yeah. And, and, and he came up with an incredible excuse. He said, the reason I make all the decisions because I don't want to put the responsibility on anyone else. <laughs> I want to be responsible. No, he but, says, I could do whatever I want. I have a mandate. Yeah. But, but the problem is, he is the leader. Of course, he's responsible for all the decisions. But th those around him, if they were competent, they would give him proper advice. They would give him some facts to base on his base his decision on. Harut, look at look at uh, foreign minister. He cannot find one, so he had no choice but to bring one of his street, uh, which was in the parliament. But the street protester, he made them foreign minister. The guy doesn't know anything about diplomacy. Same thing like the ambassador, same thing and other things. You know, this guy I just showed you, this, I, I interviewed him. I don't know if you could, you could uh, hear it. Let me see here. No. Oh, this is, this is Armenian parliament. How about this, huh? How great yeah. is that? It looks like a military base. Yeah, look at that. And then, to this is the guy. Listen to this guy. Has, yeah. Do you hear it? Uh, no. A lot of responsibilities okay, so I'm not gonna to formulate and to form the defense. So uh, this guy, I interviewed him. He is now the secretary of uh, security, whatever uh, things. The guy was uh, observer, election observer. You know. I I I had a friend of mine who said something very uh, uh, to the point. He said. Pashinyan, who marched from Gumri all the way to Yerevan, uh, the protest march. So he says now, the way Pashinyan appoints people, he counts how many steps they walk with him. The more <laughs> steps they walk with him, the higher the position he appoints yeah. them to. Yeah. Oh. And, and uh, this, uh, all these people is appointing are people who, who were his buddies. Yeah. And, and, and this is the same guy who after he became prime minister three and a half years ago, when he was asked who he's going to appoint, he says, I don't care what side they're from, what party they're from, I'm going to appoint the most competent people who have the expertise in that subject, which was a great answer. But then he turned around and did the exact opposite. He, the minister of economy, supposed to run Armenia's economy, which is in terrible shape, has a degree in mathematics. He knows nothing about economy. I can go on with other ministers also. So the same thing with foreign minister who knows nothing about I foreign. Think he's running exactly like how Saddam Hussein ran them. That he came in through another party, 
And he just brought all those people in the street, put them in the government. They had no idea what they were doing. So he's doing just the same thing. And the problem is, is not the Pashinya. The problem is Armenian people. You know, I mean, this disaster he created, they give him all this vote, re-elect him. I mean, this is why for me was, why bother go to Armenia? I'm never going to go to Armenia. Why, why should stupid people like this? I don't think so. You know? Well, well you know, you know uh, I'm not making excuses, but I would like to explain. The, ever since independence, all of our leaders, former ones and the current one, they really don't care about the people. Mm-hmm. They say a lot of good things, but they don't mean it. No. So for, for the last 30, 27 years, all these leaders, when people were suffering, they were unemployed, there was no electricity, there, there was no piece of bread to feed their children. The leaders just ignored the needs of the people and people started hating them. Now, they hated them one day, one week, one month, one year, 10 years, 20 years. After a while, that hatred is so solid that they're so convinced that these people are incompetent that nothing is going to change their minds. So all of a sudden, Pashinyan comes, and Pashinyan is a very clever guy. He may not be intelligent, but he's clever. He's a good talker. He, he talked people saying, I'm going to clean up Armenia. I'm going to clean corruption. I'm going to do this. I'm going to appoint experts, uh, right people. He, he, uh, I'm, I'm a Democrat. I'm, I'm Mahatma Gandhi. He, he said, and, and the people are the ones who make the decisions. I will not make any decisions. If, if anything important comes up on Artsakh, I'm going to get up in the square and, uh, and uh, ask the people and let the people decide what I should do. He didn't do any of those things. He did the exact opposite of what he said. So these people were fooled basically by him and, and, and their, their blind hatred of the previous leaders make them, made them blind to the current leader, not realizing that this guy is not delivering what is promising. Now, the, anytime we criticize the current leader, people tell us, oh, uh, you're defending the previous ones. My answer is, there are 3 million Armenians, more or less, in Armenia, and 7 million more in the diaspora, total of 10 million. Out of the 10 million, do we only have four people, the three former presidents and the current prime minister? There are more than four Armenians in this world. Let's, let's support some of these people, someone else who's qualified. And, and Armenians are, are no dummies, we're intelligent people. We, we have very knowledgeable people, we have expert people in economy, in science, in, in mathematics, you name it. We, you know, we have Armenians who are major uh, experts in uh, foreign relations. Uh, unfortunately, they're serving other countries, uh, not Armenia. Like Lavrov is half Armenian, he's the foreign minister of, of Russia. And, and he's doing a great job for Russia, but not for Armenia. So w- we have to get off this conversation of there's only four Armenians in the world that we have to pick from. There are millions of Armenians that we can pick from. And, and the, prob- the, the most immediate problem is, again, I have to blame Pashinyan for this, for three and a half years, Pashinyan has been saying for a hundred times that we have to change our laws and allow diaspora Armenians to come and uh, take uh, high-level positions in the Armenian government. He said this a hundred times. But if he's serious and if he's really honest, he wants to do this, all he has to do is the parliament majority is his people. He just submits the bill in the morning, in the evening, they will vote and decide and, and done with. There's no need to talk about the same thing a hundred times and not do anything. Harut, Armenia was already poisoned. And this one came, it doubled up the poison. There is so much hatred among Armenians. It's impossible that country, 
anybody could bring together unless somebody from outside. There is too much hatred. They hate Artsakh. They hate Diaspora. They hate Tashnag. They hate themselves. I've been in there. I've heard with my ears. You know, there is so much. Even now, as you could see a couple of times, we put it, you know, like uh, Arme Artsakh, they are not Armenians. Artsakh, they are Albanians. This is in Armenia. They were hatred many times. I heard this in Armenia. In Armenian, they would say, uh, and the same thing they said for Syrian. A taxi driver was driving me from A point to B point. In the middle, there was some building. And he said to me, look, look, you see those buildings? I said, yeah, look nice. Those Syrian came here. They had nothing. With our money, they built those buildings. Go figure out. Syria, 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 just hatred. They have hatred. If you are well off, you made some nice house things, you're considered corrupt. It's this. The problem is their society is corrupt. It's not just leadership. I mean, we could praise them until he'll phrase over. It's, it's, you know, I've seen it. They hate each other. And we're becoming a victim in diaspora. And now this poison being exported in diaspora, most of the people now in diaspora, lots of them, they support Pashinya without talking to Pashinya. You know, the only way you interview Pashinya, the only way you know Pashinya and how idiot he is, if you talk to him, ask him question. Three questions I asked him when he came to uh, Los Angeles. None of them he answered. He just danced around it. And then end up blaming the former government. His only people who interview Pashinyan, talk to Pashinyan, know how idiot is. But those most people, they, uh, this is why, like, like Trump. Who knows Trump? The people who work with Trump, you know, they came and said, he's not fit to be president. But, the, and then, the people around uh, Pashinyan, well, they give them a job. They're all ministers. They're all uh, governors. They're all mayors. They're all head of departments. Those people are not going to risk their jobs. Well, let, let, let me tell you something. Nobody in this world is either an angel or the devil. We're all human beings. We have our faults and we have our good points. So nobody is all bad or all good. Now, the Pashinian blames everything on the former ones, and like they were, they were the devil. Yes. And the Armenian people, out of hatred, like you said, they blindly follow that. Here's the problem. Pashinian has been in power for three and a half years. And three and a half years, he's hardly done anything, but he keeps blaming the previous ones. How long is he going to go on blaming the previous ones? He's been there three and a half years. If he's there 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, is he going to continue blaming the previous ones for doing nothing or the wrong thing and him go on and give, give, give up more territories, more concessions to Turkey and Azerbaijan and, and uh, the economy is in the shape that it's in? It's, at some point, he has to stop blaming the previous ones and say, I'm in charge and I'm going to make Armenia a better country. We haven't seen that yet. How? How, it could, easy to how blame he could make a better country? This guy is not capable. He has no background in anything. He never run business. He doesn't understand military. He has no diplomatic things. He's not a negotiator. He doesn't have anything. How could he run the country? How? He doesn't well, have those capabilities. Well, but, but if... if, if it, I, I know, I agree, but it, it, he keeps focusing on the previous ones and not focusing on... But because that is the only tools he has. Yeah, he, he should focus on that he is in charge now and he should bring the best and the brightest Armenians from around the world, giving the proper advice. It will make him look good and it will help the country. It will help the people. That's why he's there. He's not there just to sit there and uh, act like uh, the prime minister. I want to also focus on something else. There are a lot of Armenians who get upset at you. They get upset at me 
when we criticize Pashinyan. And they say, oh no, you live in the diaspora, you have no right to criticize Armenian government. If you want to play that game, move to Armenia and, and, and then you, you, you can say what you want. But here's my answer to those people. I have, I, have, I have two separate points to make. The first point is, why is it that as a human being, first, before being an Armenian, I have no right to express my opinion about anything I want to. After all, we live in a free country. We have the freedom of expression. So we should be allowed, we have the right to express our opinion about any, anything and anybody. Now, look what's happening in Afghanistan now. The whole world is talking about what's happening in Afghanistan. All the good things, bad things, terrorism, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, Taliban. Now, almost everybody has an opinion about Afghanistan, including you and I. Now, why is it that it's okay for two Armenians to have an opinion about Afghanistan, but two Armenians have no right to talk about Armenia, yeah. our homeland? Yeah. We have more right to talk about Armenia than about Afghanistan. But when we talk about Afghanistan, nobody says, you're not an Afghan citizen, you, you don't live in Afghanistan, you have no right to say anything. Yeah. We, we say whatever we want and nobody stops us. But when we talk about Armenia, people stop us, not because they don't understand what I just explained. That's because they blindly support Pashinyan. Now, if you talk about Armenia and you defend Pashinyan, then they will let you talk. It's okay. But the minute you, you criticize him, then you have no right. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're, you are Turk, you are this, you are that. Yeah. That's the first point. The second point is, all these people who, who say to me and to you and to others that it's not right to criticize the Armenian government. You're supposed to help them. You're supposed to work with them. You're not supposed to criticize them. I tell these people, listen, if the leader is something is doing something wrong and you've tried to give him advice and he refused to listen, you have no choice but to speak up and say, wait a minute, you're leading the country in the wrong direction. So criticizing the leader who's doing the wrong things is not anti or unpatriotic. It's, it's patriotic to see if, the, if your homeland is going in the wrong direction to take steps to correct the mistakes and, and stop the mistakes. It's, it's patriotic to criticize. It's unpatriotic to see your country going to hell and not open your mouth and let it go to hell. That's what is unpatriotic, not, not what we're doing. Of course, we're as good patriotic Armenians, we're always ready to help Armenia, Armenia's leaders, no matter who they are, what party they're from, what side they're from, whether we like them, don't like them, respect them, don't respect them. For 30 years, I've spent hundreds of hours with every single Armenian leader, past and present. I've given them million advice. I wasn't trying to help them personally. I was trying to give them good advice as best as I could so that they would run the country properly so the people benefit. We are for the people of Armenia. We want the good welfare of the people of Armenia. We're not uh, here to support this or that leader. Leaders come and go. The people are there, hopefully, forever. So we, we are always ready to work, to give advice, to support anybody who's sitting on the, on, on the leader's chair. Even if somebody we don't like, even Pashinyan. However, there's one condition. The condition is that leader has to be amenable to listen to advice. If he rejects the advice, and as he usually does, then there's no way we can help him. We cannot help the country, we can help the people. If he refuses to listen, they say, give advice. I know, I said, yes, I'm willing to give advice, but is anyone there listening? If nobody's listening, my advice is useless. You cannot advise dictators, period. I don't care who it would be. You cannot advise dictators. This guy is a dictator. He said himself, I am gonna, he, I had someplace I wrote, he said it, we're gonna run like dictator. 
And that's what he's doing. This guy, he knows he cannot walk freely anymore in Yerevan Street. So he's going to do everything. That's why you see he's spending millions on the police because he wants protection. He's turning slowly to Erdogan policies. And he uh, wants now to change to presidential like Erdogan did so that he will have, uh, like right now at least uh, pro a president could re reject some legislator or something, you know, but he wants to be the president so nobody could reject, he could do whatever he wants. And he has uh, such a horrible things he's going to do, that's why he's, he cannot find a foreign minister to agree with him. So he put his guy in there. So we'll see what would be his next step. And so the question to you is, what do you think can happen to Artsakh? Well, um, uh, unfortunately, uh, the damage is done to Artsakh. We've lost most of the territories that we were so proud that we liberated 30 years ago. And we probably went around telling everybody who would listen to us, saying, for the first time in, in thousand year of Armenian history, instead of losing territory, we gained, we liberated territory. It made us very proud and may, made uh, our young generation proud of being Armenian. Now we, we're in deep depression, we're, we're, uh, we're sad, we're, uh, in, in, we're in despair because of the damage caused to not just to the land, but also to every Armenian around the world. Psychologically. Not only now, but for generations to come. Yeah. And, and, the, and the damage that's done, I hope to God that someday they, there's a way to recover what we lost. I don't know how, but uh, we, uh, uh, we just uh, hope against hope that someday something will change and we'll be able to restore our pride and be proud that we're, we're, we're Armenians and that we're victorious. And, but this guy, Pashinyan, who made all these mistakes for three and a half years, he made tons of mistakes before the war, and he made more damaging mistakes during the war. And he continues after the war to do more mistakes, but not realizing his limitations, he keeps saying publicly that I'm going to uh, correct everything. I'm going to make, make everything right. How can a man who's the cause for losing all this be the one to correct anything? He cannot correct anything. He's, he just will make it worse. Yeah. It's like somebody setting fire to the forest and telling people, I'm the one who's going to put out the fire. You, you're the one who set the fire. He's you hopeless. Know. He's really you know. hopeless. He's going to... Uh, Armenian haven't seen about this guy yet. You know... You know, when I knew this guy was dictator, I don't know if I told you or not, I apologize if I'm repeating. When, after his fake revolution, he, he said, I want to be prime minister. He said it. And then he forced the opposition to sign the letters that they will not put forward candidates for prime minister, that he would be the only candidate. That was the point for me was, this guy is a dictator. Period. And for after that, I never changed my mind. I looked at this guy as a dictator. So he came in because this, this guy, he's, he's like any of those other dictators. If you look at his, his uh, biography, his background, he's like Saddam, uh, Stalin, all those people. They all come from broken families, and they have this revenge on society, and they, they infiltrate because he, how many times he run... For parliament, he couldn't get it. He ran for mayor, he couldn't get it. So eventually, he, he got into uh, Levontir Petrosian party, and from there, he was able to get into parliament. And that's all Saddam Hussein did the same thing. He was the street, like, uh, like him. He was, uh, in, uh, got into the Ba'ath party, and from there, he, got, he, he ended up president of, uh, uh, of uh, Iraq. And same thing with uh, Stalin. Stalin's name was not even Stalin. It was a different name. He changed that name because uh, w when he, he got into Bolshevik Revolution, 
he named it uh, Stalin because in Russian means steel man, you know. And so, you know, I read all this crap stuff, you know, they're all same shit. You wait to see Pashinyan 10 years from now. That's what people have to wait and see. And this guy will never leave that office. I guarantee you. He will voluntarily not leave. He will find every way, like Ortegon did, to stay in power. Well, uh, I agree. But uh, with the remaining time that we have, uh, Wally, let's talk about current events. Let's talk about what's been happening in the Armenian parliament uh, this week. Uh, I think uh, everybody saw, and yeah. if you didn't see it uh, on Armenian oh, uh, TV channels. Everywhere, here. Yeah. yeah, you saw it on BBC, you saw it on CNN, everywhere, everywhere. you saw it on ABC, it was in TV stations all over the world. Now, uh, I don't know about anyone else, but as an Armenian, I was ashamed of seeing what the this international media was showing on, on TV showing Armenians like a bunch of uh, hoodlums, barbarians, who are kicking each other, punching each other in, in parliament, and a whole bunch of soldiers, like it's a military base. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I know this is not true, but I even thought about something funny that there, there are more soldiers in the parliament than on Armenia's borders to <laughs> defend the border of Armenia. Defending Pashinyan. Now, the... The, the, whole, the whole purpose of the parliamentary session, and this was the initial parliamentary session of the new parliament, was to consider and vote on Pashinyan government's five-year plan of action. So Pashinyan comes to parliament. He spoke, and I stayed up till three in the morning, Los Angeles time, when it was daytime in Armenia. He spoke for nonstop for three hours, repeating everything that's in the document. And the document is already on the internet. People can read it. And, and then it was time to ask questions. When this female member of parliament got up to ask a question and said something critical, Immediately, the chairman of the parliament, who's a member of Pashinyan's party, of course, he tried to shut her up. He stopped her microphone so she can't speak. And then he ordered her to leave the parliament building. And when she refused to leave, he called in the, the security guards to drag her out, they were pulling her by her hair. Yeah. I mean, we saw scenes that we, you, you never imagined that you would they, see. In they Armenia. did that same thing to the journalists. They kick all journalists out. Yeah, they, they also violated all sorts of freedom of expression rules with journalists mm -hmm. trying to limit their access. And so, so that was a big scene with, with uh, this woman just because she was being critical. For God's sake, when you come and present a plan, let people say whatever they want. If they want to criticize, if they want to praise you, you cannot shut them up. This isn't uh, your private property. This is Armenian people's parliament where every kind of opinion should be expressed. Just like Pashinyan's majority has the right to speak and praise Pashinyan. That's normal. We accept that. But uh, Pashinyan's people should be tolerant and should be democratic. Instead of talking about democracy, they should practice what they preach. And they do the opposite of what they preach and, and allow people to express their opinion. And that was that day. And the next day, things got even worse the second day. Again, the subject was a five-year plan where somebody from Pashinyan's uh, some party got up and saying, all sorts of crazy things, but of course he has the right to say crazy things. And then at some point he said that all previous defense ministers are traitors. And Seren Ohanian, who was the defense minister, now a, 
parliament member and leader of the opposition. He was sitting on the front row. He got so offended. He went crazy. Uh, I, I also criticize him. But he, he grabbed the, the bottle of water in front of him and yeah. threw it at the guy. Now, yeah. fortunately, it didn't hit him. But the fact that he threw the bottle, that, that was a mistake. He shouldn't have done that. And the speaker from the podium grabbed his own bottle and threw it back at the defense minister. Now, that's how it started. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, a whole bunch of Pashinian's parliament members from his side, they got up from their chairs, walked over to the side of the opposition, started punching them and kicking them. And then the security guards were called in. Hello. And the chairman of the parliament, Machine's guy, every time this happens, he and uh, calls the soldiers in. I think your so, internet is starting to have problems, so we better finish this. Okay, well, we we're, we're almost done. Okay. So, uh, we were, they were there to discuss the Pashinyan's five-year plan, but five-year plan got lost in the shuffle. N nobody really discussed five-year plan, except Pashinyan in the first three hours of his speech. All the news around the world was about the, the punching and kicking and the fights. Not a single international news media said one word about Pashinyan's five-year plan. They didn't even say why they were meeting, not even the subject. Yeah. They all talk about Armenians, short Armenians punching each other. It, and it's we, so used, we used to make fun of the Turks when they did in their parliament. Yeah, and now we're worse than that. I've seen a lot of scenes yeah. where Turkish members of parliament were getting up on tables, throwing chairs at each other, bottles, and yeah. uh, punching each other. Now we have become like 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 them, and we have, we, th we think we're so much better than them. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming, and uh, this never end. And I I don't know. It's it's a hopeless country as far as I'm concerned, and uh, don't know what's gonna happen, what they're gonna do. But we're gonna keep talking. At some point. We just have to say, forget about it. You know, let's focus on something else. Yeah. So thanks for your uh, help. And uh, well, it's very sad what we what we're going through. Yes. And I, we just hope for a miracle. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but uh, unfortunately, it's the reverse. Everything every day is getting worse. Every every day we wake up, there's a new new problem with Turkey, with Azerbaijan, new incursions, new shootings. Uh, I think you should wait and see when he signed that he recognized Azerbaijan territorial integrity probably would be bloodshed in Armenia. But we'll see. And that's why he's, uh, uh, this, his budget, he was supposed to bring it in three months or a, couple, a month ago or something. But he delayed it because he was, he couldn't find somebody to be a foreign minister, you know. But anyway, we'll just wait and see and it's uh, it's many ways developing these things, uh, but I believe Pashinyan and Erdogan they have something going on. But we'll tell. I'm watching that, investigating that, and and then we'll see because I think that's Erdogan and Pashinyan are cooking something, and these guys are the cookers. So, but we'll see. Again, thank you very much for coming. And we'll see you maybe next week. We'll talk some different subject. Who knows what's going to develop. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.